Christine Roll Street in Reading on Thursday, May 14th at 7 p.m. on the petition of David Chuha, who seeks a variance under sections 512, 521A, B, and C, and 522 of the zoning bylaws in order to construct a single family dwelling on a non conforming lot. I guess I need this. On the property located at 50 Lothrop Road in Reading, this is a prior variance case number 12-11 that has lapsed. I'll, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list other than to say that they've all been notified, as well as the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, the Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Build Engineering Division, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Boarding Zone or the Reading Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stone, and Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is under oath, so if you're going to speak this evening, I would appreciate if you stand up and raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, we'll turn the floor over to you for the moment and let us know what you are wanting and planning to do and what you're asking us for. Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair before you start, you need to make me aware. I, yeah, I should reiterate that. Before this meeting, you were made aware of the fact yes. that we only have four members yes. tonight. And you need a unanimous 4-0 approval to go forward, okay? And I think you decided after not being told that that you wanted to move forward anyway. Yes. So, okay? So that's why we're here tonight. Right. You okay. just have to put that on the record, so. Right. I understand. Okay. Okay. Um, well, obviously, uh, time has elapsed. It's been two years tomorrow that I bought the lot from the town. And initially... As a builder, I was going to spec and put a house on it. In the back of my mind, and with my wife, we were thinking that we were going to build our house there. So about, I'd say a little over a year ago, we decided, you know, let's do it. Let's, let's build our house. And we, you know, started to look at houses and get some ideas and went to see an architect. And it's been a lot of work to, to <laughs> basically come up with a plan that one that we, not only did we love, but that we could afford. The first set of plans, we basically threw them back and said we couldn't afford to build a house. And so finally, oh, believe it or not, all through the winter, you know, we were going back and forth, tweaking and, and, and you know, convincing and trying to keep the same style. And basically time just lapsed and I was, completely unaware that it even expired. I honestly, when I bought the, the lot from the town, I just didn't know it expired. I didn't know it was an expiration date. Um, and here we are. So when I went to see Glenn, Glenn said that I needed to come back. So we took the necessary steps and basically, you know, that's why I'm here. Okay. So basically the variance has lapsed. Yeah, the variance lapsed. has lapsed. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. you know, I went into with the plans and saying, okay, Glenn, I finally have, you know, have the plans and this is a pretty good idea of what we want to do. And that's when he said, well, this is what you need to do now. And okay. see, uh, hopefully try to get the, uh, you know, the, the, the initial one that you have back so that we can hopefully get started and not have any uh, delays. Okay, thank you. You want to add anything? <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, as you know, the Glenn is not here this evening, but he did give us a memorandum which I would like to read into the record at this time. The applicant purchased this property from the town of Reading in order to construct a new single family dwelling. This variance case 12-11 was granted by this board. The applicant did not apply for his building permit within the required time frame and the variance did expire. This application, case 15-05, is exactly for the same purpose. I do not have any issues or concerns with this application 
to construct a single family dwelling. Signed, Glenn Redner. Okay. Uh, I'll start with you, Eric. Do you have any questions or comments to make with regard to this request? Um, no, I mean, uh, just the obvious one that the applicant has addressed, which is the lapse of time. But I mean, it, it certainly, you know, it, it's there for a reason. But I mean, it seems like, you know, you've, you've you know, provided a, a reasonable, you know, response to that. John? Well, uh, since this is a brand new, we're treating it as a brand new hearing. Um, I think it would be appropriate uh, to have the applicant go through his request for the variance to get it on the record. Uh, even though he's been here, been there, the board has done that. But this is a brand new hearing, so it needs to be on the record. Okay, you know what he's referring to? Oh, there are four criteria for us granting a variance, okay? And I think it was in your application, and we just, I think we're just requesting that you walk us through that. Okay? I'm sorry, I, I, you want me to what? Just walk us through the justification for the variance, for the four criteria that are required to get a variance. Sure, I mean. Okay? And I'm referring to the variance criteria sheet right oh, here. Okay. Oh, okay, you want me to sit, uh, read it? Well, you can just walk us through it and, and, and give us your, your, your justification as to why you feel you're compliant, okay? Which is basically what's in here, okay? Oh, okay. See, you, you, you were before the board. The board granted the, the uh, variance, the variance lapse. So you had to re-advertise, come back in. This is a brand new hearing. Right. Okay. Even though you have it before and it lapsed, this is a brand new hearing. Okay. So it has to go on the record. You have to go and justify the, the criteria for the variance. And what you have here that I noticed, um, you, you cited 512, 521A, B, and C. Um, 522, well, our bylaws have changed since then, so um, a lot of that has changed. And I think in terms of the parts of the, of the uh, requirements under the sections of the bylaw, um, we probably haven't changed appreciably. They just aren't reorganized. And They've been renumbered pretty much. Put in, in charts yeah. and, and, and so forth and so on. So I think, uh, at least for my uh, uh, part of it, all I want you to do is to walk us through um, the variance aspect of it, which you did back in 2012. Well, I, honestly, I bought the, the town did it. I didn't. town did it, yeah. I, I bought the lot from the town. Oh, that's right. That. The justification yeah, for the variance was done by, by Peter, and, Peter and, yeah. and, and, and town council okay. at that time. They're the ones that came before us for that previous authorization to use that property for single yeah. housing only. Remember? John. Okay. So this is the first time that this gentleman has been yeah, before I, us. Yeah, prior okay. to that, I, you know, yeah. I didn't know anything. I noticed in here that the justification for the variance, is, the verbiage is a lot like what was in the previous one. It's basically a carbon copy. In fact, it's essentially basically, a carbon copy yes, of it. Uh, Glenn, Glenn had mentioned, okay. I mean, what I'm really trying to do is just, time has lapsed. I want basically the same you know, conditions and just start again. Yeah. Just try this, to renew it. Yeah, I, I read through this and, and I compared it to what was in the variance criteria justification the last time. Yes, it's, it's and it's almost a verbiage it is. copy yes. of what the town came before us with two years ago. Yes, that, that's uh, what we're, we're trying it, to do. It, it looks and like at you one just. Point, I don't remember, I said there, there, there was no 40B or something in that. And this one, I'm certainly not trying to do anything like that, but just trying to build, you know, our home. Initially, it was going to be. That's in there. I didn't even. I honestly didn't read it. We just took it as trying to renew, you know, and tried to put the same conditions, I guess, that were on. Them. Your approach was taking what was is now is. is yes. Is. Exactly. Okay. So I don't know how how much more we want to get into that one, John. 
Um, just by stating the the the, uh, the first criteria is the um, soil condition, shape, or topography of the property, which was um, uh, presented, and the major portion of it is that you only have 40 feet of frontage, which is not even consistent with the 40A, which is the minimum of the 50 feet of frontage. However, you have well beyond the 5,000 square feet, and beyond that point, you're not looking for any uh, dimensional control uh, request. Um, the second criteria basically is that um, uh, th there's, no, there's a substantial hardship uh, for financial or otherwise because the property would not be able to build upon in its present form. Um, so it would be um, a loss to you if you came back before this board right now and asked for variance and uh, were denied the variance um, because you sank a lot of money into it. So the biggest portion of it is the financial aspect right. of it. Yes. The third uh, section is uh, that it, uh, uh, the, the relief granted would not be substantially detrimental to the public good. You're in an area that um, has all smaller lots. You're hidden, I shouldn't say hidden, but you're back behind those lots on, off of County Road um, so that um, there should not be any uh, impact on the neighborhood. And the last one was that uh, you, by granting release, we wouldn't be uh, nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance of the town of Reading. And um, again, uh, going back, um, you have more than the 20,000 square feet. You have um, 40 feet of frontage entrance. It's not just going to detract from the other houses in the area because you probably, from what I can see, you will be seen because it's, it's hilly back there unless you're going to cut it down. No, yeah, it's going to sit up and, and back. Okay. Um, so that's the only thing I want to get on the record, that there are the criteria still here. And I think you just put it on the record. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> because there was nobody here to put it on the record. That's right, you got it. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. No. Kathy. I don't. I have nothing to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I don't really have any other comment either, other than all of the paragraph references are to the old copy of the zoning law, and I gather that if we're going to approve this variance or act on it tonight, we'd probably be re referencing paragraphs. The appropriate paragraphs it, that are in the current version right. of the law. We need to figure out what those are. Yep. I took I took a shot at it, but I don't know what any of you. And I didn't bring my old book with me either, so I can't. Okay. No, I think it's out in the car. I can go get. Well, it. I walked through it, and yeah. uh, just to start the discussion on it is that uh, uh, it talks about six. It, it's. What he requested was 6.2.1, which is, relates to lot shape, which was, blah, 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 blah. I think it was 5.1.2. It is so, I think the appropriate paragraphs are now 6.2.1 lot shape, 6.2.2 lot frontage, and 6.3 table of dimensional controls, all of which are pretty similar, oh, they're exactly the same as what they were in 512, 521, and 522. Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even think they changed, they didn't even change the, the language in those subparagraphs. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the appropriate paragraphs to be referenced. 621, 622, and 6.3. That's the only comment I had tonight. Well, there was one other, I guess. If I looked at your plot plan, I guess it's called a proposed site yes. plan. Yes, yes. Uh, there was a listing in there, one of them which was lot width. And I was trying to figure out what, where those numbers came from. Well, I have a certain For a 20 area. square foot lot, it was it is 80 feet. For a 31,574 square foot, it's 120 feet. Well, is that the, the current um, 
find that like, like the survey or put that on there because Glenn yeah. wanted some added verbiage. Maybe the the survey put that on there as needing 140. And that variance would be, in other words, you're saying all the dimensional controls are met except for frontage. I assumed he thought it was 120, and we only have four. Yeah. I, I I looked at it and I said it, it's it's not re almost not relative. Right. I think to the decision said, yeah. we're trying to we're, we're asking us to make, but I just thought I'd raise the yeah. question. Okay, since so I could open it up for public opinion, <laughs> but I'll open it and I'll close it. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments from the board on this case? No. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Anyone? Can do it. I guess we're all looking at you. <laughs> 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 uh, I move to approve um, the petition of David Chuha, who seeks a variance under sections 6.2.1, 6.2.2, and 6.3 of the zoning bylaws in order to construct a single family dwelling on a non conforming lot on the property located at 50 Lothrop Road in Reading, Massachusetts, as shown on the proposed site plan prepared by PJF and Associates for Highland Avenue, Wakefield, Mass., dated April 27, 2015, um, and stamped by Paul J. Is it Pinocchio? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Um, professional land surveyor? Yes. Okay. Um, do I need to reference the prior variance or? I you don't, don't, you don't have to no. because it's a brand new hearing. No. Okay. It's just a whole new situation. It's a whole new situation. Okay. So, so moved. Second. Do we reference the architectural drawings as well? Oh, we could, yeah. Oh, that would, that would yeah. Huh? Yes. Can I just make one point? Yeah. Yes, you can. The, the plan that we have may be tweaked within the, uh, how do I describe it? We're very close, but he, he's, uh, he might want to bump out um, one section because there's a problem with headroom going up the stairs. We might have to add a foot, uh, but it still wouldn't meet the dimensional controls. So what I guess I'm asking is that proposed plot plan, if I need to move that house within dimensional controls back three feet, forward three feet, or expand the house a couple of feet, I would want to be able to do that within the zoning of what was 1211. So, you know, Glenn, when Glenn said, get me the proposal, I mean, the plans, I emphasized to him that this, we're 99% positive. But I had, put, I had to plot that to get in for the meeting. So it, it could shift two or three feet, but certainly mm -hmm. not 20 feet or whatever. And it could grow up there. You know, so I, but I want to say, I. I will maintain the dimensional controls that we um, were uh, before us in the last case of 1211. I mean, the key criteria for a variance are the zoning bylaw and the, and the, the control dimensions on the lot, side mm -hmm. setbacks and front and rear setbacks, mm -hmm. and height. Okay? Right. Those are key. Uh, usually reference the architectural drawing simply because that's what you're coming in and asking for and, 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 and so it's just on the record as this is what it is and, and okay. so forth okay, okay. Uh, is it required uh, for this variance request my sense is it may not be what's your perception john you've been on this board longer than i um well, as long as it falls within the parameters right. of the setbacks, uh, you're going to be dealing with the building inspector anyways. Yeah, and, he, and if you're going to make a tweak here or there, you're going to do it with his concurrence anyway. Okay, that's, that's what I just so didn't I guess want to I, I still don't see a problem with referencing this, but if you want to tweak a uh, foot here or there, and so as long as you're within the, the, the okay. bylaws, okay, thank you. I don't see a problem with it. Hmm? Uh, I mean, so I the, 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 well, we reference it because of the, the plan indicating so that if you do vary from that and, and the building inspector permits you to do that, um, it's a new structure. I mean, it's from the ground up. It's not replacing anything. So he's going to keep you 
um, to the setback and he's going to ask for a foundation plan sure. and right. everything right. else before right. you, you do it. Yeah, right. The only thing that you're close on is um, what would be considered the front and that's 22 feet away so you are you don't have much room to play on, on that one. The other ones, right. uh, it appears that you have more than sufficient room unless um, mm -hmm. there is um, some elevation problems. Right, and that's where, you know, when we go in there, so if we hit a big chunk of ledge, I mean, or, you know, we're, there's a lot of things in there, and, and so with literally a day before my uh, survey, you know, plotting it on the, you know, computer and trying to put it on there. So it, that's where I was just a little nervous of if we had to keep it in the exact same spot. But Glenn did say that when I came in to mention that, you, you know, you, you want to be able to stay within the dimensional control, so you might have to put it right yeah. here. I think what John is saying is that your 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 margin of your yeah, leeway yeah, no, on the front is close. very That's short. I, I mean, Ten percent, okay. If you want, you, if you go beyond that twenty foot, oh, yeah, margin, no, you're back that. here. Okay. No, I, I have a, I have an instrument survey done. I'll make sure. <laughs> well, in in subject two, as you said, if you hit the ledge back there and whatever, um, the elevation aspect of it, determining what that thirty five feet is. Oh, that uh, will always stay in effect. Well, it's how it's measured. Yeah, so no, there's two criteria in there for measuring the height. The building inspector is going to determine that. But if you hit ledge and you want to go up a little bit, um, we have to take we have to take uh, your uh, architectures architect architects uh, proposed uh, setback and requirements in here, along with your certified plot plan as being the reference which is what we're, we're giving you the variance on. If you stay within that envelope uh, in terms of the height also, then uh, you know we'll never know it because the building inspector will determine that. However, <laughs> if there's a problem, yeah, no, as I said, you will be back here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> right. I, say, let's, let's then. I just yeah. want to reference the um, okay. architectural plans yep. as well. Yeah. Um, it looks like Plans number one. So I think it's one through seven. Through seven, and they were prepared by Phoenix Collaborative Architects, dated April eighth. Is that April sixth? Six. April sixth, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? It is approved. Four zero zero. So if you stand by Thank for a so minute, much. I'll stamp some okay. copies for you. Okay. Yeah. We have 40, 14 days to write up this decision, okay. and then there's a 20-day appeal period. So it's going to be a little over a month before you can go to the town hall and get started. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you very Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's okay. common that's common practice anyways. What for variance? No, for, well, variance special permit same thing. Okay. That's not.
All right, what have I got here? Okay, that's the one. Oops. Okay. The only other thing on the agenda tonight is the review of the minutes for April 2nd, 2015 meeting. I give everybody a minute or two to take a look at them. Had only one proposed change. Yep. That was only paragraph on page two. Um, next to the last line. Uh, we're not removing the old pumps, we're just removing the old pricing signage on the pumps. Good point. Pricing signage? Just the signage. The signage. Pumps are the, staying there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. The static, the static numbers. And that's going to be replaced with the like LED toppers. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? I didn't see any. Yeah. No. Okay. Sure. I wasn't there, but it looks like it was I'll a good time. I'll a motion to accept yeah. the minutes as amended. So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Four zero zero. Uh, we've had a lot of. I just talk about this, but we've, we've had a lot of conversations or emails back and forth about Robert's rule, whether they apply to this board or not, and I guess there's some ambiguity about it. I would recommend that we not discuss it tonight and we do it with the full board I present. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I don't think we would have to vote on that. It's just a suggestion and I mm -hmm. will agree with that. It should be a yeah. full board discussion. We have to commend Kim and Maureen. Kim? Oh, for finding it. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. All in favor? Four zero zero. Fast. Wow. <laughs>